Gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, people be saying, you be talking about how tired you are, but you get that, that. Shut up. To prove to you that I'm tired, that's why you guys don't hear any music being played in the background. Okay? Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I must be tired if I ain't playing some type of music. So, yeah, it's tired. So don't worry about me being tired. It's, uh, for the most part, this time of year, spring into winter into spring and summer into fall. This happens every single time. You heard me say it when we went from summer into fall. Okay? You heard me say the same thing back then. It happens every single year, so don't worry about it. It's an annual thing. Get ready. It's a semi-annual thing. Shut up! Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is a statute at large. Let's tell you which statute at large it is. Statute at large, pay attention. Pay attention. 94. Pay attention. 248. Okay. Now, they're going to say, no, that's Title 12. Uh, the, the blah, 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 blah. Okay. 93. 248. Okay, I don't know. They could be wrong, but all I know is this says right here. So let's do this. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me show you the way. Here is the code for Yuma Esme. So you want to know the U.S. code junk? I want the statute at large. I don't want, I don't ever want to use the U.S. code for nothing. U.S. code is prima facie evidence. Okay, 12 U.S. Code 248 is where you're going to find it under G. What up, G? Anyway, hold on. Let's go. We got to go back here. Right here. Pay attention. Requiring writing off of doubtful or worthless assets of banks. I keep telling you guys, but nobody keeps listening to me. This is the code you show the court to prove that they wrote that junk off. That's why they're taking you to foreclosure. Well, if they wrote it off, they received the benefit. If they received the benefit, they received the benefit. They have to offset your account. They didn't do that. That is a fraudulent practice of the banks because they are required to offset the account. The benefit they received when they wrote off the debt, they received a tax reduction, tax deduction, and or a credit. And either way, those are benefits that are directly, that are directly, that are directly associated with your account. So. Requiring writing off of doubtful or worthless debts or assets of banks to require the writing off of doubtful or worthless assets upon the books and balance sheet of the Federal Reserve Banks or the membered banks of the Federal Reserve because they are considered Federal Reserve Banks. Pay attention. That's number G. That's what you're looking for, G. Okay, hold on now. Let's prove that they're required to be bonded. Requiring bonds of agents, safeguarding property in the hands of agents. I didn't say this. This was already there, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care about this section. I'm just trying to show you that. Okay, let me let me break it down to you. Then I'm going to end this video and go eat and go to sleep. Yeah, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Not even 4 o'clock. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Not even 4 o'clock. Yeah, you heard me say morning. That I told you I was tired. Ladies and gentlemen. Let me point this out to you. The people who signed up for our program, they're still in their home. And many of them will testify that they ain't paid a dime since they signed up for our program. Our program is not to delay and keep you in your home for years. Our program was designed so that we could document the record. And that's what we've done. There has been a plethora of communications that have gone out. Why? Because those communications of which you go to small claims court. The video for small claims court was supposed to be done today, but I'm tired, and so it ain't going to be done today. See, that the problem is that takes a lot of thinking, okay? And because it takes a lot of thinking, it won't get done until at least probably by Sunday. But it's going to give you all of the nuances of small claims court. Back to the clients. The reason why... They're still in their properties is because of the paperwork that we do. So, ladies and gentlemen, this document right here. This document right here is being done, redone for you guys. Okay, this is being done in the first person. This will be sent to our clients, and we've decided we even put that in red for y'all. 
so that y'all go ahead and replace that. But we even put the actual act in here. This is the Consumer Credit Protection Act. Okay, this is the one that says that it's against the law for them to do what they're doing. You just got to go read it. Section 152 and 153, 82 stat, 152, 153. Read it and see if you don't <gasps> really have one of those moments. Okay? So that's what we're doing for our clients, and we're giving them enough ammunition so if they wanted to go to small claims court, they can go 29 different times if they chose to because they can sue them for not responding to each one of those letters as required of them by law. That's what we're doing. I'm going to show you how I kept going back and forth in the small claims court. Now, getting back to the clients and the services being provided for them, everybody is looking to have that one little special magic pill. There, there's no such thing, y'all. No such thing. Give me a second. I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all something. There's a document that I was sent some time ago. This book explains, in everyday English, federal publications up to 1986. And what bankers explained to Tom, bankers told Tom that they want this to remain secret. They even tried to get Tom to swear to secrecy. The bankers wrote a loan agreement. If it is good for America, why not explain all the details to all the voters? Ladies and gentlemen, this document I can't give you because I don't have their permission. Of course they copy wrote this. Well, they copy wrote it. Pay attention. Pay attention. They copy wrote it. The, I know I know some of y'all have it. That's its address. Write him and ask him for his publication. That's its address. Okay. It is 264 pages worth of stuff. I don't need to read it. The information is already known. It's not a secret, people. They, the banks think it's a secret, but you can't, as I was telling people the other day, you can't have secrets. There are no such thing as secrets on this planet. As long as one other person knows, then you might as well consider it everybody knows. Okay? Nothing hidden will be uncovered. There are no secrets. So this is not a secret, but pay attention. Distributed locally by, okay, about the author. Diverse background, he graduated from Northern Illinois University with a bachelor's degree in science with double majors in accounting and finance. Okay. This was, this was his life. I don't know the document, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't read it. But I was going through some old files because I have a ton of documents on this computer. This computer alone has over what is it, 30 terabytes worth of information attached to it? Wait, y'all don't believe me? Hold on, let me show y'all something. Where you at? Uh-oh, it's missing. Oh, there it is right there. Whew, I'm like, where is it at? Where, did, where is it at, see? Two eight terabyte hard drives and about six four terabyte hard drives. Well, one, uh, two of them are five terabyte hard drives. So that's 10 plus the other three, four terabytes, and one four terabytes not plugged in, another four terabyte plug not plugged in, another two terabyte not plugged in. A lot of information on this computer. I don't plug in the other hard drives because it's got information I don't want. Uh, individuals who hack the system, because we got people trying to hack the system all the time. Those don't get connected to this computer. There's another computer they get connected to. All right, and then I got another computer sitting next to me that I've not even ever turned on, okay, because it's one of those mini computers that was supposed to be connected to the monitor, and I just, I've never turned it on. But anywho, tons of documents on this computer, tons of things to help people. I don't go over it. It's too much information. I don't have time. I literally don't have time. I would love to go over this document, but don't have time. I'll probably put it in the PDF reader and, you know, let the PDF reader read it, but don't have time, not even to do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, 
this document we're going to give to the public, but we'll give it to our people first. I am doing it now, so y'all just going to have to wait. I got to get back to the section I was just working on so that uh, I can finish. Okay, that's where I'm at right now because I'm adding a little bit more information and a little bit more proof to support whatever it is I'm saying in this document for people. It's in the first person. It's in the first person. So you're saying I and my and me. Oh, me, oh, my. Okay, so this will go to our clients first. And then it'll go to the public, okay? Well, it'll go to our, our clients first, then it's going to go to the people who trade with us because I told them I'd give it to them. This is from the Eon Foundation. So this is not proprietary. This is, it's mine. I control it. My idea, I came up with it, and I donated it to the organization. However, pay attention. This is very important. Prior to donating to the organization, I'd already promised that I would let other people have use of it, which is why I say I wasn't going to give everything, but we're going to give you guys an exact copy that we give to our clients. Not the copy we sent out. You won't get that, but you'll get a copy of what we sent to our clients because it contains more information. The information I'm correcting right now and adding is not on any of the previous documents, but this is solely going to be for the people. Ladies and gentlemen, look. 1933 banking holiday. The banking holiday, according to Congress in 1973, is still ongoing. If the banking holiday is still ongoing, then all normal banking activities has been made to cease. Okay, so what are you guys working for? No, no, ask yourself the question. If all banking activities has been made to cease, then what are you working for? There's no money. I'll even show you the statute. Let's see if I can pull it up. Give me a second. I should have it. Uh, we're going to go to documents, downloads, downloads. See, told you he's tired. Alrighty then. Uh-oh, I don't think these are it. Those are not it, y'all. I can't go to any one of those, so we got to go here. They got to go to current files because that's probably where it's going to be. There it is. I need the one. Got to open this up a little bit. Open, open, open. Uh, credit defined, credit transaction defined, credit enforcement via control of the currency, credit criminal liability, credit disclosure. I think we're going to do, let's see, nope, is probably going to be, we're going to credit defined. That's where we're going to go. We're going to do credit defined. Definine. Hold on, y'all. We almost there because I just can't go owns no more. I done taken all I can stands. Hurry up so I can go eat. Give it, give it a second, y'all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's the document right here. We're going to look up what credit means. The term credit means the right to granted by a creditor to a debtor to defer payment of a debt or to incur a debt or to defer its payment. Huh. The term creditor refers to only to creditors who regularly extend or arrange for the extension of credit for which a payment of a financial charge is required, whether in connection with loans, sales, property, or services, or otherwise. This provision and this title applies to any such creditor irrespective of his or her status as a natural person or any type of organization. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You see how Congress defined what a creditor is? Now, you notice how they highlighted that a creditor is what? Someone who extends credit for payment. Did you know that? Oh, the other one you want to do is your best friend. This is, this is your best friend right here. Uh-oh, get back over here. This is your best friend. Consumer. It's an adjumative. Adjumanamative adjective consumer used with reference to credit transactions. Consumer credit transactions characterize a transaction as one in which a party to whom credit is offered or extended, which is a natural person, and the money, property, or services which are subject to or the subject of the transaction are primarily for personal use, household use family use, or agricultural use. 
ladies and gentlemen, your Truth in Lending Act proves, because this is the Truth in Lending Act, the Truth in Lending Act proves that you were loaned credit. You weren't loaned any funding. There is no money. How can they fund the loan when there is no money? Shh, don't tell nobody. It's just credit, people. Go over this. You want to know where it's located? Hold on. Uh-oh, I done messed them up. Uh-oh, I done messed them up. Uh-oh, I done messed them up again. Okay, let's go to the top. It's 82 stat 147. 82 stat 147. It says it right here, 82 stat 147. All right. Now, how do you get the 82 stat 147? Let me show you the way. Jackson's. Can it be I stayed away too long? Did I leave your mind when I was gone? You're going to go to US code, see, music.house.gov forward slash stat viewer. Stat, S T A T, viewer. V I. E W E R dot H T M. And then you can put 82 stat 230, whatever, which one it was. And there you go. You got a copy. And you just right click, like I said in the last video. You go save image as, and you just save it. And then you open it. When you click on and open it, you're going to right click and you're going to click open as a PDF if you have a PDF software on your computer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Hope this information is beneficial for some of you. I put it out there because I know there are people out there who do some research and they need just a little oomph to move forward because they already know some of these things. They just don't know the combination. Okay, my job is to be the locksmith. All right? Take care, y'all. We gonna talk later. I don't know why that disappeared. Let's bring it back. I'm out of here.